Hello, my name is Jamie and welcome to this video. We're still working on the Velociraptor and today we're going to add a rig. Hit like and subscribe and all that YouTube kind of stuff. Now before we get started on the rig, there's a couple of things that we need to do. First up, it can be very helpful to have every object in your scene named correctly. So over here in the outliner, you can select each object and just see what they correspond to. So here we've got the Raptor as the main model that's there. That's fine, we'll keep that name as it is. And then we've got Sphere and Sphere.001. Obviously they're different eyes and we've got one selected and then the other one selected there. Now the eye on the right side of the screen is the Raptor's left eye. So if we're going from the Raptor's perspective, that's his left eye and that's his right eye. So we'll make sure to name those correctly. So we'll call it I dot L and this one we will name just double clicking on the name I dot R. Beautiful. Now it is also important to have the origins of all of your objects set correctly. So for the main Raptor model, we want the origin to be set to the center of the world. So as you can see here, it's set to the center of the world and it can help to have the Raptor standing on the X axis, which he currently is a little bit off the top of it, but that's not so much that it's going to cause an issue. If yours isn't, there's a couple of things you can do to fix that up. First of all, get the Raptor in position like this with the center of the body aligned to the Z axis and where he is standing aligned to the X axis there. And then you can set the origin to the 3D cursor. So if you press shift S, you can do cursor to world origin. So if I move my 3D cursor over here and then do cursor to world origin, you can see the 3D cursor is now there. And then with the Raptor selected, if we go object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, or alternatively, you can right click and go set origin and then origin to 3D cursor. So I've done that. And because the origin of the object was already there, it hasn't actually changed anything. So that's fine. With the eye models, what I think I did earlier on was just set origin to the geometry just to get things into place nice and quickly. But that's actually not quite correct because we have this extra bit of geometry for the pupil of the eye, which actually sticks out a little bit. So that's going to offset the origin by half of that amount that it sticks out, basically. So to fix that, I'm going to go into the outliner and I'm going to click on the eyeball next to the raptor just to hide that. And a good way to see what's actually going on is just from the top view. Because this is a sphere, when we rotate it, it should spin around perfectly and not have any wobble. But if you look closely at the the eyeball now you can see that it does wobble if you focus on the grid lines here next to where the eye is as it's moving around you can see that it moves towards and away from that uh, i can zoom in to sort of make that effect more apparent it's wobbling all over the place now so what we can do is go into edit mode select the top vertice there and then come to the bottom and shift select the bottom vertice and then go to shift s cursor to selected and then go back to object mode and you can see the cursor is not exactly where that origin is and then go set origin origin to 3d cursor and now if we go to top view and start rotating you see there's no more wobble and the only thing that sort of sticks out is that pupil part so that's perfect then we do exactly the same for the other eye so just select that top vertice you can even go into wireframe and just box select through there and just double check that it's selected on both but it has so we'll do shift s cursor to selected back into object mode make sure just the eye is selected right click set origin to 3d cursor and then we can double check this one as well just by rotating it and that's perfect so we can bring back the raptor and now we can add in the armature so we'll go to the side view we'll do shift s to set the cursor to the world origin and then shift a in object mode to add an armature. So we are building a custom rig from scratch. We could use an add-on like Rigify to generate some constraints and some controls and stuff for us nice and quickly, but we're not gonna get too complicated with this rig. So we'll just be going over the basics. I'll show you how to create an IK leg and use certain constraints to make certain movements a bit easier. So with this first bone selected, I want to go over to the bone properties panel and actually rename this one root. And then under the object properties panel over here, the orange square, we'll go to uh, viewport display and select in front. 
and that's just going to help us to position the bones without being occluded by the raptor. So even though right now it looks like it's in front, it's actually still in position. So it's just the view of the bone is in front. Beautiful. Now with this armature selected, we can tap it into edit mode. So I might bring this down in the Z a bit. And then shift D to duplicate. And move this bone and rotate it up into a rough position here. And this will be where the sort of hip controller is. So we want the spine going forwards and then the tail actually coming back off here. Now, an easy way to keep the size of bones nice and consistent along the tail, what we can do is select this end of the bone and actually hit E to extrude and then move this end all the way up to the end of the bone. We can go to wireframe so that we can actually see everything. That's about right. So back to solid is fine. And then select the bone and right click and subdivide and then subdivide again and maybe one more time just so there's lots of bones so there's lots of um, curvature that can happen there and then with this bone i'm actually going to um, not extrude i'm going to move it to roughly where the shoulders are and then hit subdivide twice so these bones are roughly the same size as these and these are all for the spine now we might rotate some of these move them to be in a slightly better position closer to where the spine should be and we'll make sure we give our bones some names whilst we're going so this one here i'm going to call hips and then we've got spine and i'm going to hover my mouse over this dialog box where you can enter the name and hit Control c and then over here whilst hovering over this one we'll do a Control v and then another Control v on this one and you can see it's been named spino1 and spino02 and then over here we'll do tail and then control c and control v there control v and just make sure you select each subsequent bone and paste in that name it's there and just make sure that those numbers are going up correctly all the way up to tail.007 so that being the eighth bone in that chain that we subdivided a couple of times now from the head of this bone so the thinner side of each bone is the head and the thicker side is the tail so from the head of the hips bone we'll extrude down then come into the front view go to wireframe and in the move just press g and then x to move the head of this bone out to within the wireframe of the actual thigh and we might move this up a little bit and then extrude down when you know you're going to have a joint that you're going to be affecting by something like ik it is important to have the head of the bone actually further out at the front of the knee and that will encourage the inverse kinematic algorithm to work how you want it to work so do the same back here so we want this joint to bend back the other way so we'll encourage that one that way and then this one we're not too worried about so that's going to be at the foot and we'll place that there then we can go to the top view or because it's being occluded i'm just going to rotate around so i hit e and then y just to bring that forwards a bit and just see where that's sitting so i do want to move that in the x so that's right in the middle and maybe check this bone here so g and then x make that make sure that's nicely in the middle there we go so they're all nicely aligned and then we want a bone for each of the claws or toes and then another bone coming out to here and then a bone going up so that we can use that as a control bone for that toe so we'll move this out in the x that one's looking okay now we don't really need this bone here we can actually press x and then delete that bone and you can see there's a relationship line between these two bones here uh, if you're not seeing that for some reason 
So if you go to the bone properties panel here and then go to relations, you see that the parent is the hips bone. So if the hip bone gets moved, then any of its children will get moved at the same time. And those children don't have to be connected. Um, as you can see here, the actual connected tick box is off. So if we tick that, it'll actually move that bone to be connected, but we don't want that in this situation. We'll just hit undo. So we do want to name these bones as well. So we'll call this one upper leg dot L. It is very important to have that dot L. So I'm going to call this one lower leg dot L. This one shin dot L. This one which I'll call foot dot L. And then we go toe1.l toe2.l and call this one foot2.l and this one toe3.l can be a little bit repetitive but it is very important to get these names correct especially with the suffix um, especially with the suffix that denotes which side the bone is on that will actually make a whole lot of stuff a lot easier so next we'll add in the arm very much like we did before so we'll put things into position probably have the shoulder up higher And we'll actually leave this bone in as that's the clavicle which can be used as part of animation so once again with the elbow have that towards the back of the elbow and then we've got the and then we've got the lower arm here we'll just bring it just slightly further back and then have a Hand bone that is probably about there. And then we'll extrude this middle finger down. We'll have the separate bone here for the claw. So then if we want to, we can animate the claw interacting with something. I'm looking quite menacing. Now from the front view, none of that is aligned. So we'll just select all of this. G and X until it's in the right sort of spot and then we'll move the individual joints so they're basically we want them to be roughly in the center of the mass and by moving the joints we can get those alignments much closer to where we want them Wonderful. Okay. So then we'll probably select these three bones here and press Shift D and sort of move them roughly into place there. And just reposition these bones in one view and then another view. To get things looking good now i want this bone to be connected so i'm just going to click connected what do i um and it's looking a little bit out of whack now so i might bring this hand bone back a little bit just to try and get that alignment a bit better no it's not quite right so I'm going to actually turn off that connected and bring that back over here. And that will be fine. So then we can select these bones again, shift D and then G and X and just reposition things so that they match the mesh. Something like that. Yep, that's looking pretty good. 
So once again, onto naming, make sure we name everything as we go. Otherwise it will be much more annoying to do right at the end. So I'll call this one clavicle.l. We've got upper arm.l. Lower arm.l. Hand dot L and then we've got three fingers, so we go. I'm gonna call it finger O one O one dot L and then finger O one O two for the second joint dot L and then finger O one O three dot L. And then finger 0201.l and just use, you can use this naming convention, you can use any naming convention you feel like. Um, just something that you can look at and make sense of to try and reduce having to click on the bone and find it, just figure out exactly what bone it is. So I know any of the finger bones that is number 03 is actually the claw. So it might be worth naming that one, uh, the claw bone. And then finger 0303.l, beautiful. So we only need a couple more bones. So we'll add one for the neck. Coming up to the head here. We'll add one that's sort of a general top of the head bone. We'll add in a jaw bone. Now I'm going to uh, disconnect this one, so I'll turn off connected. And select it and try and get it barely into position. I found this bone quite difficult to get perfect. So don't stress too much um, if you're having issues later on. I will also be having issues later on. Don't worry. Um, and then lastly, we want an eye bone. So we do want to align the eye bone perfectly. So we want to have the tail of the eye bone in the center of the eye and the head of the eye bone can be pretty much anywhere. Um, but by having the center of the eye bone um, perfectly in the center of the sphere that is the eyeball, um, it will allow the rotation of that bone to then correctly and dictate the position of the eye. So what we'll do is we'll extrude out roughly to near the eye and then we'll come out of edit mode into object mode. We'll select this object. So now that we've select, set that origin to be exactly where we want it to, we can do shift S and cursor to selected and then go back to selecting the armature, tab back into edit mode with this end piece uh, with the head of this bone selected we'll go um, shift s selection to cursor and then we can extrude out an eye bone and basically anywhere we set this it's going to be a perfect angle for the eye um, so we'll just have it sort of sticking out through the pupil something like that and we can actually then delete so X and then just delete the bone. So there's still that relationship where it's connected to the head. So the eyeballs will still follow the head, uh, but the um, there's no need to have a bone that's connecting those two. We'll name this one I.L and it actually might be worth, because we've got an object named I.L as well. Just to reduce confusion, we'll name it I bone, which is quite funny because there is no such thing as an eye bone, but that's okay. And then we've got the head, got the, the neck, and the jaw. And to me, that neck is probably looking a bit too long. So I'm going to right click and subdivide. We should have neck and then neck.001, and that's fine. Might even move the head bone back a bit. Um, that's looking okay to me. I'm not adding any bones for the tongue, as that would just add a lot more work to this rig. And I would encourage you to add that functionality yourself. Um, but for 
just learning how to actually rig a creature. We don't need that right now. So we'll go to pose mode now. And we'll put in a couple of constraints. Um, first off, I want to select the tail, and then we can go to the bone constraint properties here. This doesn't show up unless you're in pose mode. And I want to do, I'm actually going to go to tail.001 and go copy rotation. And the target shall be, um, it will select armature. And then if under bone here, we just type tail. And then we got bone tail. And then under mix, we want before original and target local with parent. So you can see the bones were sort of shifting around, but now they're back into position where they always were. And what that will do is when we rotate this bone now in pose mode, this bone that is now green will also rotate. So you can see I'm rotating this one. If I press R and then move my mouse, I'm getting that rotation in. But you can see that the green one is actually rotating as well. So now that I've rotated this basically 90 degrees up, this bone has also rotated 90 degrees from that bone. So if we then Alt R to clear that rotation, what we can do is select all of these bones and then select the one that's got the constraint on it. And we'll just do an F3 and copy, uh, copy constraints to selected bones. And you can now see that they have all gone green. And if we select the tailbone and rotate, it now rotates in a nice curve. So that's a nice demonstration of sort of the basics of what you can do with constraints. So generally, you probably don't want the um, tail to be curving up like this or anything like that. But I mean, you have that option now. And you can get that motion really nice and quickly. Um, generally, you probably just want a slight movement of the tail in one direction or another direction. But you generally don't want the tail to be stiff and straight. So just by having that copy rotation. Along the tail, you have the ability to have that nice, smooth, curved rotation. So now I want to add in the inverse kinematics or the IK for the leg. And to do that, we're actually going to need to go back into edit mode for a moment. And we want to add in two new bones. So these are sort of controller bones. Um, so if we select the head of or the, the tail of the foot bone or the head of the, um, the lower leg or the shin bone, and then extrude on the Y and just bring it back a little bit. And then select that bone, go to the bone properties. Uh, we don't want it to be connected. and We don't want it to, do, to deform. And we'll change the name to foot IK dot L. Maybe it foot, foot IK dot L. And then up here at sort of the main knee, we're also going to extrude one out in the Y, but going forwards this time. And we'll do the same again. So we'll uncheck deform and uncheck connected. We'll change the name to knee IK dot L as well. And in both instances, we do want to make sure that we clear the parent on both of these. So that we can move them out in the Y. And we'll leave this one actually right exactly where it is. It's important for that one to be there. Next, we want to go to pose mode and select the lower leg and come over here to bone constraints and add in an inverse kinematics constraint. Now the target will go to armature and then we'll go type in foot. And as we type that in, we got the foot IK.L. So we set that there. And we'll set, so with the chain length set to zero, that basically means infinity. So the whole leg. Um, so this constraint sort of weirdly controls the whole rig. And we don't want that. We want just the leg to be moving up and down. So we set the actual chain length. So on a normal character leg, you might set it to two. Um, in this case, it's not going to work because we've got the, um, we've got the extra leg in the bone. So what we can actually do here is set the chain length to three. And now we've got a, a leg that is working pretty well. And we can also set the pole target to armature and then type in knee, knee IK. And this usually causes the bones to spin around and look all wild and wacky. Uh, typically, it just means that you need to 
change the polar angle until it looks good. So what I might do is go to top view and look at where these bones are compared to the uh, tips of the claws, which we aligned them quite closely and just realign them back up. So for me, minus 95.5 looks pretty much bang on. So I'm going to leave that there. And now if we actually grab the hips of the character, we can see that the leg now moves automatically up and down. So as we move the controller around for the foot IK, you'll see that the rotation of the foot is not really doing what you might want it to do. So to fix that, so in edit mode, we'll select the foot and then we'll select the heel and hit control P and hit keep offset. And now we have much cleaner control of the foot. You can actually use the IK to rotate the foot as well. So you can sort of use that one control to position and then rotate the foot. So something like this, which is nice. We'll do Alt R, Alt G. Uh, but you do have the limitation of the foot now disconnecting instead of just the IK bone. So to fix that, we can actually set a copy location constraint, set the target to be in the armature under the shin.l, and then set a head to tail to one. And now like before, just the IK bone actually disconnects and the foot stays connected, which is a much more helpful behavior. Once the mesh is weight painted to the rig, we don't want the foot to be completely moving away from the leg. Now, as far as any other controls go, we're not really going to get into too much more. Just to explain the knee bone sets where the actual knee is pointing. So when you rotate this foot bone, it's not rotating the knee, but we will make sure that we set the parent of the knee to the root bone. So we'll select the knee and then the root, control P, keep offset. And we'll set the parent of the foot IK also to the root whilst we're here keep offset and then parent of the hips oh, this one's the hips and then shift select there and control p keep offset now we want the um, tailbone to actually be connected to the uh, hip bone rather than the root so we select the tail and then we select the hips then we do control p and keep offset as well so that should mean when you go into pose mode and select the root bone and move it, everything else goes as well. Ah, we did the parenting the wrong way around there. So uh, we'll go back to edit mode. So we select the foot, select the root, control P, keep offset. Okay, back to pose mode, select the root, and all the bones move along. And you can even see up here, the eye bone has moved as well. So that's all looking good. And that's the basics of the rig that we need. So next up, we'll go back to edit mode and we'll select all of the bones on the left side, including the clavicle and the eye bone. We don't want any of the bones that are down the center selected. That looks good to me. It looks like we've got everything selected. Then we can go to armature and symmetrize. And that has duplicated and flipped all of the bones that we had on the left. So here we've got direction minus x to x. So we can see now if we select some of these bones, we've got, say, the eye bone. We've got eye bone dot r. We've got upper leg dot r. Shin dot r. And if we select one of these finger bones, finger bone 02, 03. Ah, so that's perfect. Now, if we go into pose mode, we'll also see it's create. It has. You will also see that it has copied all of those constraints. So now we have that leg rig that uh, the foot stays so now we've got, so we keep that leg rig where the foot stays connected and this knee bone controls this leg which is really nice and then the root controls the whole thing so now we're at the point where we want to make sure the bones are set correctly for deformation so if we go to the root bone we'll see that deform is actually still ticked on there so we'll turn that off and we're actually going to turn off deform on the eyes as well. And the knees, make sure that's off. The um, IK foot bones, that should be off as well. That's all looking good. The rest of this we do want to be deforming. 
So now we want to parent the eyeball to the eye bone. And to do that, uh, it's a little bit tricky, but first of all, I'm going to select the eyeball and do control A and apply the rotation just to make sure um, that the rotation is sort of as default now. And then we'll select the eyeball. And then we select the eyeball object. And then we shift select on one of the bones of the armature. And then we can go up here from object mode to pose mode. Shift select the eye bone that we want to actually do the parenting with. Do control P. And we want to select bone relative. And that is how you parent the, the eyeball. So now if we go... If now if we make sure everything is deselected, then select the armature, go to pose mode, and do some rotation. You can see the eyeball is now moving. Perfect. So now we can make the raptor look at things. So we go back to object mode, select the other eyeball, select the armature, go back to pose mode, select that, control P, bone relative, object mode. Uh, and then select that in pose mode so with nothing else selected we can see that we are now able to make the eyeballs do wacky crazy things like looking around i find tapping r twice can help with rotating these sort of things um, you can use constraints to have a separate bone that the eyeball always points to uh, we're not going to worry about that for the scope of this ring Especially because the vision of the raptor is not binocular, so you don't want the two eyeballs looking at the same point or near the, looking near the same point at all times. Uh, you're probably only going to be seeing one of the eyes anyway at any time, so you can have them pointing where you need them to be looking, and that means that we're ready for the weight painting. So to do that, we'll go to object mode. So we'll select the raptor object and then select the armature, do control P. And we've got armature deform and we want with automatic weights. And that's going to do a fairly good job at automatically weight painting the raptor. So if we then start moving things around, you can see that's working. For some reason, it hasn't weight painted any of the piece in the cheek, but that's okay. We can fix that up. Now, the frame rate is getting a bit low for me because I am recording and I've got two levels of subdivision on the raptor so to get back to the object it's now a child of the armature so we need to open that up here and then we can see the different objects that are actually parented to the armature so we can select the raptor object uh, we need to be in object mode then we can select the raptor and go to the modifier properties here and you can actually see the armature modifier has been added into here um, but under levels viewport for the subdivision i'm going to turn that down to one for now to see how I go. Yeah, that's much better. I've got much smoother control. Uh, if you need to go lower, obviously go lower. But that's why we didn't apply the subdivision to the model yet, because that, this gives us the ability to have a nice low poly character in the viewport that's super duper smooth that we can work with. And even when we turn the textures on, um, because it's nice and low poly, it's yeah super easy to work with. Cool. So. There's a little bit more work to be done, and basically what we need to do is test out each part of the rig and see if we're having any issues. So we start off with the tail, for example, we'll select the tailbone, rotate things up. We see that the tail is following really nicely. And we can actually hide the armature temporarily in the viewport. So you can see that's nice and smooth. And if we select the raptor and just turn up the um, into object mode. Then turn those subdivisions up a little bit you see that there is starting to be a little bit of weirdness there but that's in a quite extreme angle so if we go back to the rig and just make it a slighter rotation and then just hide the armature it's looking fine Obviously you can if you want to get into a bit more detail there, but we're not going to. The legs are bending quite nicely. I'm not seeing any issues there. So I'm looking in the um, joints here mostly just to see 
that they're not collapsing too much. And that looks okay to me. I can grab this foot and bring it forwards. And we can see now that the leg bone here is affecting stuff back here. And it's also affecting stuff up here. So that's probably something we need to fix. Um, same with this arm bone here. It doesn't look like this bone is affecting anything else. So it's just the upper arm. The clavicle is affecting stuff down here. A bit too much. I think. So we'll make sure to look at that. Got the head. The head is bone is not working at all. You can select everything with A and press G, um, Alt G and Alt R just to make sure everything is moved back to default. And then if we use R to try and close the jaw, <laughs> you can see it's all getting very wonky up in the head. That is quite normal when you've got a detailed area with just a few bones in it. Um, these bones should not be affecting anything other than the eyeballs, which they're not, which is good. So to do a bit of weight painting and fixing up, especially what's going on with the head, um, we'll select the raptor in object mode. So in object mode, select the raptor, and then shift select the armature. And then we'll go over here from object mode to weight paint. And then we've got everything blue because we've got no bones selected. We've got, that seems to be the bone that's selected. Um, we can shift select. So we press shift and then left click on a bone. It'll actually show you what it's affecting. So I think to start off, we'll select the jaw. And what we might do is actually come over to go back to object mode, select the armature, go to object data or the little scoping guy here, go viewport display and set to stick. And that just gets the bones out of the way whilst we're rate painting. So we'll select the object, go back to select the armature, shift select that. And then back to weight paint. So now, okay, we've got the jaw selected. We can choose other bones, select the jaw. And then if we press N, we've got the tool. Um, there are different brushes over here, but it's not quite what I'm looking for. So over here where it says draw, we actually want to select subtract now. And we'll just make sure we've got the X mirror selected here. So we only have to paint one side and we'll just subtract everything that we don't want the jaw to be affecting which it currently is affecting that includes those teeth and what's all over here we'll change views in a second just to make sure that's not affecting anything else on the body i don't think it was and then just some spots along the top and then if we rotate and look up and in actually see it's affecting all this stuff here. So just anywhere you see something that's not that dark blue, uh, that's where we'll be painting the subtraction. Now we do want it to be actually affecting the bottom of this piece here. So we go back to the add. And we'll just paint on there, especially along that the bottom part of that. We'll see how that goes. Although we probably want a little bit of, we'll put a bit of effect along the middle of it as well. Okay, beautiful. So next we'll select the, um, actually what we can do is do a rotation now. Nope, we can't. Ah, so I've got these bones selected, so I'm going to shift select each of those just twice. There we go. So that's deselected them. So then if I shift select this bone and press R, we can actually see what's going on. And it's getting there. Um, so let's select this head and subtract. From here, all of the stuff in the jaw. underneath like that so we'll shift select that one again so we've only got this one selected when we rotate 
So that's getting closer. So it looks like there must be some more bones that's affecting the jaw, which it is. So this one here, this one's actually affecting all the way up in the head. And it's just a matter of sort of being clever and seeing, um, seeing what you think should be affecting different areas. Okay, something like that. Try rotating the drill one more time. That's looking much closer to what we want. Let's just check the rest of these neck bones. So this one's also having some effect. It might be different for you specifically where different bones are laid out and where your geometry might be. It's worth just spending a little bit of time to try and get things right. There we go. So once again, we'll make sure these ones are shift selected, shift deselected, sorry. And then rotate. And now I'm not seeing the teeth move at a different rate to the actual jaw, so that's good. Uh, we've clearly still got some stuff selected up here. Ooh. And what we can actually even do is uh, rotate down and then paint. Subtraction on these vertices, hopefully. No. Okay, so that makes things a bit weird, but what we can do so we select this in object mode, we'll go to the modifiers and armature, we can select these two options here to show the vertices that are being affected. We can actually select them. And under the object data properties, we want to find the, the vertex groups. And we don't want this to be attached to the jaw. So we go to jaw and select remove. And that has fixed that issue. So that's like manual weight painting. So when we're weight painting, we're actually affecting these vertex groups. Um, so we'll go back to object mode. Um, we will select the raptor, shift select that, go, nope. We will shift select the armature from there. Go back to weight paint, beautiful, okay. So now we can see that only what we want to be affected by this jawbone is being affected. Uh, we're probably not going to go super extreme when you're animating. Think about how extreme you want the mouth to be open. I don't think it's got a reticulated jaw like a snake would, so we're not going to worry too much about that. Uh, we do want to make sure that this mouthpiece is, and the teeth up here actually need to be affected by the head. One thing to note about weight painting is if a vertex has uh, one bone giving it just a little bit of influence, like these ones at the front do. They're going to act as if that's full influence from a bone, because there's nothing else to compare to. So it's only once there's more than one bone that's affecting vertices that the actual the value of the weight paint sort of kicks in. So we can paint, basically, we go to uh, add, we can paint basically any value on these, and they will all follow at the same amount, make sure that's all painted in, do that gum as well. And then rotate, and that's looking quite good. Now I want to add effect to this middle part of here as well. Try and get that entirely done on there. And so when we actually rotate this it's a much cleaner transformation now if we go to project mode just like this and go to pose mode you can see it's nice and clean the actual transformation there it's quite rounded rather than flat um, we can do a corrective shape key for that but we'll do that once we've got the actual weights all sorted out 
So let's go back to a bit more weight painting. So we'll select the Raptor, shift select armature, and we need to make sure that we were in object mode first. Then go to weight paint. Okay. So I'm finding it's cutting in here quite quickly. So we'll try uh, subtracting the headphone from up here. And possibly giving this a bit more influence. You can actually adjust the strength of your brush up here or by pressing uh, Shift F. So we'll go to 0 0.5 and we'll just add a little bit of influence around here just to try and prevent that from creasing too much straight away but that looks like it's too much influence so we'll come back to subtract turn the strength down a bit rotate that bone so that's sort of a a medium I'm willing to sort of accept. It's probably still a bit too much being affected by the jaw, I'll be honest. But this is where lots of corrective shape keys would come in handy, but I'm not going to get too much into that. I'll just fix up that there. Maybe add something there so it's not getting too starting to pinch up here so there's probably a lot of influence there so we might subtract just a little bit up here yeah that's better so we get much further open before it creates issues and that's looking about right for me so we'll continue down that looks okay, that looks okay. We'll make sure this head movement is looking okay. Oh. Not that we would be animating, I don't think, this particular bone from the looks of things. Although why isn't I think the let's go back to object the control tab. Yeah, okay, so this jaw should be connected to the uh, head and it's connected to the wrong one. So do control P, keep offset. So there we go. We can go back to pose mode. And now we, how we would expect it to actually work is something a bit more like this. So we can get an almost, we get to about here before it starts to get too weird back there. We'll see how much of that we can fix with weight painting. Uh, we'll go to object mode, select the raptor, shift select the armature, and then go back to weight paint. It's a bit of a, it's a bit tedious going back and forth. Um, so we probably want to create, let's try creating like an inverted sort of roundness there. Make sure we do something like that. It's not as bad, although it is <laughs> quite weird. I think it's going to be a matter of if you want it to be up and roaring, then you select that one, and then this one, and then this one, and then it heads all the way up. Yeah, 
So double tap A is your deselect everything. So that's working in sort of as as if we're selecting all the bones. And I think I'm going to leave that as it is for now. And for the clavicle, we don't want it um, affecting the front too much. Just sort of up on the shoulder is where we want that to be affecting. That looks okay. Shift select this bone. So that's got a lot of effect way back here. And this is the arm bone. So we don't really want that to be affecting much of anything other than the actual arm. So rotate the clavicle again. That's looking okay. Rotate the just the arm. And that's probably affecting things here still a bit too much. Let's try and get these colours a bit lower. There we go. That's about right. Um, I haven't actually checked the fingers, so that might be worth having a look at. That looks okay. That looks okay. Getting a bit weird in the hand there, probably a bit too much influence up in the hand. Yeah, that's better. Decrease the influence around for that middle one. And then do the same up here as well on this one. I'll just give you the ability to do a bit more nicer animation with the hand and the fingers, make them feel creepy and claw like. Lovely. Okay. And then we wanted to take a look at what <laughs> this leg bone is affecting most of it. So let's just decrease a lot of that, just to sort of where the actual leg is. It is very soft, the fall-off that you get. Um, that's better. That looks like there's a vertice. There's that in the hand that's decided it's no longer connected. Select this bone, or even this bone, and hit add. Just add those back in there. And there's the vertice over here as well. I'm just going to select the head bone and add it to that one, maybe. Hopefully, that's enough. Okay, let's um, grab that hip again. Oops. Yeah, everything's looking pretty good. Might d decrease the effect the hip bone has back here, though, a little bit. That's looking quite far. Yeah, so you can see the tail segments, especially towards the end, they're quite even. Um, you might want to increase the distance of like this overlap so this only comes a little bit up the bone here so it only comes a little bit down the bone there probably want to increase that maybe towards the middle of each bone uh, i'm not going to worry about that for now i think right now we've got a pretty decently rigged character 
that we can now pose. That's okay. So we'll do a quick pose with the subdivisions nice and low so I can actually still see what's happening. I mean, what sort of pose do I want to do? First of all, I want to go Alt G and Alt R, make sure everything is nice and stable. Okay. So let's. Make a big grid. So if you tap, um, so when you're rotating a bone, if you press R and then say I want, I know I want to rotate this in the bones local X. I just double tap X and just quickly get uh, that like this. It sort of looks like he's turning to run towards. If I have a camera here, then he's turning to run towards the camera. I select the two clavicles, rotate them in the Z. Uh, we can rotate it like that, but up. Yeah, that's that's a fun little pose. I don't have any limits set on any of the bones at the moment, so we can pretty much just rotate and move things wherever we want them to be. So we'll just make sure there's nothing getting too in the way of anything else. Maybe bring this arm. Um... Quite a bit like that. And forwards. Cool. I might actually place my camera now so I can actually get an idea of what we're looking at. Hide the armature. And select my camera. Oops. Select my camera. Why can't I move my camera? I'm in post mode. So select camera in object mode. Maybe control alt zero, DZ. Not the best pose, but it's just a very quick, quick and sloppy pose to show that you can do something interesting, something fun. And we'll go select the armature again. I just want to rotate that head a bit. In the Z, maybe. maybe I'm looking down. Yeah, there we go. But we can do a very quick render. We probably want to rotate the eye as well. I think it's the shading is actually changing that look so we'll go to environment texture yeah that's a quick fun silly little pose just to show what we can do probably want to rotate this eyeball out in the z just a little bit so it looks like he's looking at the camera um this foot <laughs> the pose in the foot's looking way off but whatever that's fine okay so that's a that's a nice quick test and then we can go back to object mode. And if we want to keep that pose. Say you've done the world's best pose that has ever existed and you want to keep it. There's actually a pose library function here. We click new. And then just add that pose in there. And if we do an Alt R and Alt G on all bones. And even an Alt S just to make sure nothing got scaled. We can scale the bones and it will make things go weird. We can then, uh, so we've got apply pose library pose, we apply that, we have to select all the bones and then apply, and then you've got that pose back again. Now, next week, what we'll do is we'll spend a bit of time improving the rig. There's a couple of shape keys that I want to put in, for example, an eye blink, and I'd like to improve what's happening 
with the piece of skin in the corner of the mouth. I'd rather have that more of a flat shape rather than the curved shape that it currently is. And to do that, that requires a shape key that's driven by the bone. To get all that stuff working nicely is a lot of work for a little bit of reward. So I thought I'd do it as a separate thing rather than almost doubling the length of this video where we've gotten quite a lot of work done in a short amount of time. So thanks for tuning in. I would love to see your progress on the Velociraptor. There's a link to Discord in the description. The file will be available on Patreon for anyone that would like to support the channel. Hit like and subscribe and all that YouTube kind of stuff. And until next time, I will see you later. Goodbye.